Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a company that recently announced their earnings about last week or two weeks ago around there, and that's Generic Holdings. Generic Holdings, for those who don't know, it has a little description of their company right here. They basically design and manufacture energy technology solutions and other power grid products. And their products include solar and battery storage, smart home energy devices, and like advanced power grid software platforms, as we can see from these photos right here. So they're basically a company that's committed to sustainable, cleaner energy products, which is obviously going to be extremely useful and is going to be incorporated into our society in the 21st century with all of the clean energy things happening right now. We can see that over the last five years, they're up 617%, which is pretty impressive. They were actually up about 1200% at their all-time highs right here at almost $500 per share but they've since tumbled quite a bit from their all-time highs they're down almost 25% over the last year about 13% over the last month but they are up about 20% over the last month or they were they were down 13% over the last three months and they're up about 20% over the last month so we're gonna see if at the current share price generic holdings presents a good buying opportunity and then I'm also going to go into their last earnings report, as we can see right here, to just look through their financial statement and get a better understanding of the financial health of the business. So thanks in advance for leaving a like on this video. It really helps out a lot. And let's get right into it. So as we can see right here, this is their income statement for the first quarter of 2022. And they're just comparing their year over year results from the first quarter of 2022 to the first quarter of 2021. And we can see right here that their net sales for the first quarter came out to be $1.135 billion, which is up about 41% year over year from 870 or $807 million last year. And we can see that their gross profit is also up from $321 million last year to $360 million this year. And if we were to break this down by operating segment, which it goes into a little bit later in detail in the next couple of financial statements, we would see that most of their revenue comes from sales to the residential sector. So sales for like just home products like this, where they're just powering someone's home in the case of like a hurricane or something, they would have like backup energy as we can see right here from this photo. And then a smaller percentage of their sales which still makes up more than 10% of their revenue, comes from sales to the commercial and industrial sector. So that's like construction and architecture and things like that. Then right here from their operating expenses, we can see that they had a decrease in income from operations year over year. They had about $189 million last year and only about $154 million this year. And then we can also see that their interest expenses are pretty high, sitting at about $9.5 million for the first quarter. So they are paying interest on debt sitting on their balance sheet at the moment. And we can see lastly that their net income for the first quarter came out to be $116 million down from $149 million in the first quarter of 2021. And this decrease came primarily as a result of their increase in cost of goods. And that came mainly because of inflation. Obviously, we're competing and living in a pretty inflationary environment right now. And there were also a bunch of supply chain challenges, increased commodity costs, and obviously increased labor costs due to the fact that a lot of people are quitting their jobs and so there's a lot of demand for labor but not a lot of supply in the market right now and then right here we see with their balance sheet that they have total assets totaling out to be about 5.1 billion dollars most of that is made up or not most of it but a good percentage of it is made up of goodwill so <clears throat> that could be a little bit concerning considering that if they want to be able to cover their short-term and long-term debt obligations they're going to be relying on their assets and if most of their assets are made up of goodwill then that could be problematic in the future and we can also see from their liabilities and stockholders equity section that they have total liabilities of about 2.7 billion dollars and then total stockholders equity of 2.3 billion dollars so their business is financed almost 50 50 by liabilities and equity a little bit more on the liability side 
So as a result, they are going to be paying some heavy interest payments for that, which is going to eat into their cash flow, as we can see right here from their interest expenses. And then next, we can see in their cash flow statement that they actually had some difficulties with their operating cash flow in the first quarter of 2021. They actually had a cash outflow from their operating activities of about $10 million compared to a cash inflow of about $152 million in the first quarter of last year. And we can see the main issue here it primarily came from an increase in costs for inventory which as i touched on earlier came as a result of their supply chain challenges inflation and then also increased commodity prices and logistics costs and things like that which ate into their operating profits or operating cash flow then right here we can see that their net cash use and investing activities year over year stayed pretty consistent from 21 million to 27 million dollars and then we can also see from their financing activities that there was a big jump here. There's a cash outflow of about 40 million in the first quarter of 2021, and then a cash inflow of about 95 million in the first quarter of 2022. And that primarily came from them increasing their increasing the amount of cash they've been borrowing for the first quarter. We can see they borrowed about $110 million in 2022, but they didn't borrow anything in 2021. So that's primarily what resulted in the increase in cash. And then we can see the increase in cash right here at the beginning of the period was about 147 million. And at the end of the period was about $206 million worth of cash. And then we can see right here, as I touched on earlier, the income that's broken up by operating segment, as well as by geography. Domestically in the United States, we can see that that's where most of their revenues are coming from. Of their $1.13 billion of revenue, about $964 million of that came from the United States, and then $171 million from outside of the country. And then over the across their different products, we can see residential products make up $776 million of the $1.1 billion of total revenue that they had. And next, I want to figure out what the intrinsic value of generic holdings is. And I've already gone ahead and taken some values from Yahoo Finance here. And according to Yahoo Finance, they're basically anticipating that generic holdings is going to grow at about 13% compounded annually over the next five years. And so for the next five years after that, I was just conservative and I cut that value in half. And then we can see they have about 63 million shares outstanding, not that many shares. They had about $301 million of cash flow in 2021. And then right now, their net cash minus the net debt on their balance sheet is sitting at about $1.03 billion. And so based on these metrics right now, assuming that we want at least a 10% return annually for our investment in generic holdings, we would want to buy into the company at around $68 per share. That would be our estimated intrinsic value. And based on that, if we were to compare that to the current share price, it would seem that generic holdings is still slightly overvalued based on these current estimations from Yahoo Finance. Currently, they're sitting at about $261 per share. So depending on that, I mean, they are currently trading at a P ratio of about 34 times earnings. So, I mean, sometimes these financial models aren't completely accurate, but they are a tool that we can use to try to gauge where a investment is basically positioned from a value investing perspective. But on top of that, I also did a competitor analysis here so we can see how generic holdings is holding up against the rest of the industry. And we can see that compared to two of their main competitors, Terex and Cummings, we can see that they're beating them across pretty much all fronts, gross profit margin at 36%, much higher than the other two companies and then net profit margin 14% return on assets basically showing how efficiently the company is using their assets to produce net income and profits we can see generic holdings is basically beating out their competitors on all fronts in this regard so according to their competitor analysis it would seem that they could be a good investment compared to the rest of the industry but then according to yahoo finance growth estimates from analysts it would seem that their intrinsic value per share is definitely a lot lower than their current share price that they're trading at. So based on that, I mean, although they've tumbled quite a bit, almost 200, almost by 50%, almost from their all-time highs of 500 to about $250 per share now, 
I mean, based on that, I would think that generic holdings could potentially be a good buying opportunity, but obviously based on the estimations from Yahoo Finance, it would seem that it might be best to wait a little bit longer to see if the share price tumbles a little bit further. But I would definitely love to know what everyone watching this video thinks. You guys think that generic holdings is a good investment or not at the current share price? Let me know in the comments section down below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone in the next one.